Good morning. Welcome to this service of morning prayer for Thursday, March the 4th in the second week of Lent. I mentioned yesterday that we are giving thanks and celebrating the lives of two brothers, John and Charles Wesley, both English uh, clergymen who lived throughout most of the 18th century. I spoke yesterday about John, the great missionary, and today I'll say something about his brother Charles. Do that uh, just before we hear the epistle reading. God is our hope and strength, a very present help in trouble. O Lord, open our lips, and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. The night is past, and the day lies open before us. Let us pray with one heart and mind. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O Lord, set our hearts on fire with love for you, now and forever. Amen. Usually at this time we hear a reading from one of the Psalms, sometimes called the Hymn Book of the Old Testament. Charles Wesley is known primarily to us today as a composer of hymns. Many, many of his hymns remain in our hymn book, so I thought instead of having a psalm, I would read from one of those hymns, I'm sure it'll be known to many of you, Love Divine, All Loves Excelling. I'll read the first and the last verses of this hymn. Love divine, all loves excelling, joy of heaven to earth come down. Fix in us thy humble dwelling, all thy faithful mercies crown. Jesu, thou art all compassion, pure unbounded love thou art. Visit us with thy creation, enter every trembling heart. Visit then thy new creation, pure and spotless let us be. Let us see thy great salvation perfectly restored in thee. Change from glory into glory, till in heaven we take our place, till we cast our crowns before thee, lost in wonder, love, and praise. mentioned yesterday that uh, John Wesley was known primarily as a sort of evangelistic preacher. Uh, he did a number of what today we would call revival ministries, and uh, if you'd like to hear a bit more about him, you can go back to yesterday's uh, morning prayer and hear something of that. His brother Charles, who was also an Anglican priest, uh, led a much more quiet life as a parish priest, but he was a wonderful poet. He wrote during his lifetime almost 6,000, I think over 6,000, hymns for use in churches on all occasions, and one of the purposes of his hymns was to provide his brother John with material that he could take on his missionary uh, journeys because he met people, many of them could not read or write, they certainly wouldn't have books with them, and John Wesley wanted to use the hymns as a kind of rallying way, the way singing can be so important in developing the spirit of people. And uh, John, his brother Charles provided, I would say, hymns for just about every occasion in the church year and from the, from the Christian scriptures and in the, life of, uh, in the life of Jesus. You would know many of them. I'll, I'll just mention a couple of them. Uh, you'll know by name, I think. Um, Lo, he comes with clouds descending. Come thou long expected Jesus. Um, Hail the day that sees him rise. Oh, for a thousand tongues to sing, love divine, all loves excelling, we just heard. And then, by far the best known of his hymns, Hark the Herald Angels Sing, Glory to the Newborn King. And the character of these hymns, if you look at them, first of all, they're wonderful teaching hymns. They're not just vague, sort of indecisive um, outpourings of emotion or enthusiasm. They really focus on a passage of scripture, an article of the Christian faith, and teach it. So Wesley teaches the Christian faith through the hymns. They're also beautiful, they're colorful, um, they are emotional, they're not dry or dull. Uh, so they combine the enthusiasm of the heart with the important knowledge of the head. So the people could go back from John Wesley's uh, revival meetings as we can go home today, uh, singing those hymns, you know, change from glory into glory till at last we uh, see the uh, lay our crowns before the lost in wonder, love, and praise. So they really speak to the head, but they speak to the heart as well. Our scripture passage this morning comes to us from the letter to the Hebrews, uh, chapter 2. 
beginning at the 10th verse. It was fitting that God, for whom and through whom all things exist, in bringing many children to glory, should make the pioneer of their salvation perfect through sufferings. For the one who sanctifies, that is Jesus, and those who are sanctified, all have the same Father. Since therefore we children share flesh and blood, Jesus himself likewise shares the same things, so that through death he might destroy the one who has the power of death, that is the devil, and free those who all their lives were held in slavery by the fear of death. Because Jesus himself was tested by what he suffered, he is able to help those who are being tested. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, we thank you that you have brought us safely to the beginning of this day. Keep us from falling into sin or running into danger. Order us in all our doings and guide us to do always what is righteous in your sight, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty and everlasting God, you hate nothing that you have made, and you forgive the sins of all those who are penitent. Create and make in us new and contrite hearts, that we, worthily lamenting our sins and acknowledging our wretchedness, may obtain from you the God of all mercy, perfect remission and forgiveness, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Keep us, good Lord, under the shadow of your wings in this time of uncertainty and distress. Sustain and support the anxious and fearful, and lift up all who are brought low, that we may rejoice in your comfort, knowing that nothing can separate us from your love, in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. Now, as our Saviour Christ himself has taught us, let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift up the light of his countenance upon you and give you peace now and always. Amen.